Hello and welcome to the EZ classes. In this video, we will discuss one of the important theories of international trade, namely the Hatcher Olin theory that you can see on the board. It is also known as factor endowment theory. Okay, because it is based on the endowment of the factor, I mean which country is endowed with what factor uh, in abundance, uh, that becomes the basis for the um, international trade because this, that determines the comparative advantage. So, I will explain this. Okay. This theory was, this theory is called hacksher olin theory because the two economists, uh, Ellie Hacksher and Bertel Olin, they are credited with uh, producing this theory. Not that they have worked on it simultaneously. It was first published in a paper by uh, uh, Heckscher in 1919, uh, but uh, it was not well received or it did not receive the kind of attention it should have. It was 14 years later in 1933 that one of his Heckscher's uh, student, Olin, Bertel Olin, who uh, refined the theory. Uh, I mean, uh, recast it in some uh, better form, something like that, and then the theory became popular. And so it is known as Axer Olin theory. It is important uh, uh, for the reason that it explains as to what is the source of comparative advantage. And comparative advantage, as per the Ricardian theory of comparative cost advantage, is the basis for the international trade. Those of you who want to uh, want uh, to view the uh, lecture on comparative cost advantage uh, of Ricardo, uh, you can um, find it in the EZ class uh, YouTube channel. Okay. Uh, though some of the unanswered questions uh, were answered by subsequent uh, economists uh, who uh, are called uh, neoclassical economists, but uh, those things uh, in some other videos. Today we will concentrate on Heckscher Olin theory that seeks to explain the what is the source of comparative advantage. Okay. So, so besides the theory itself, what it is all about, and especially what is its conclusion. And if this conclusion is empirically tested and if its assumptions hold, then what does it lead to? Because that has a very significant uh, implications for the conduct of international trade, especially the factor movement. Because I, I will come to that point later. But first, the statement of the theory. It is simple, basic statement of the theory is that a nation will export the good that uses or in the production of which rather the production of which uh, requires the intensive use of the factor factor that the this nation has been endowed in abundance. Okay. That means a nation will export the good production of which uses the factor intensively um, that is available 
in gen, uh, uh, in abundance that is uh, it has been endowed with uh, generosity okay different nations are endowed with different factors of production though the factors of production that are considered in the theory are capital and labor so if a nation is endowed generously in labor it will export a labor intensive commodity labor intensive good and the country that has been endowed with capital generously it will export the capital intensive good okay so that will become the the competitive cost advantage would still remain but source of competitive advantage is the factor endowment rather than the technology okay so that is the basic statement of the theory now two things need to be distinguished that one is abundance and one is intensity a good is said to be uh, labor intensive if it uses more labor than capital in order to produce a unit of output as compared to the other good for example if you are taking into account the two goods if one uh, uh, good is produced with certain amount of labor to certain amount of capital if this ratio is greater uh, then what ratio is uh, used in other good uh, that means the good will be known as the labor intensive if labor is used more than capital then it will be labor intensive and if capital is used more than labor it will be capital intensive okay so this is as far as the intensity is concerned the other thing is abundance abundance means availability of the absolute amount of that factor in what amount that factor is available in the nation what amount of capital is available and what amount of labor is available that means this nation is endowed with this so theory assumes that different nations are endowed with different amounts of factors of production and that should be uh, put to use um, uh, 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 in exhaustion that is they should be fully utilized so i'll, I'll turn to assumption so abundance and intensity are two different thing so it is the abundance that will determine as to which kind of good nation will be exporting that is which is intensive to that factor that is available in uh, abundance in the nation okay and subsequent discussion will make it yeah in order to save time i have um, written uh, some of the factors though some are still left then i will write later these assumptions on which the model is based and i will explain the implications of these assumptions as to how these uh, assumptions are important to the theory the first and very basic assumption is i mean that it is 2 by 2 by 2 model that is two countries two goods and two factors of production earlier there was only uh, labor that was used as a factor of production in the ricardian theory so here Uh, it's a two factors of production and of these two goods i mean goods are two countries are suppose country 1 and country 2 or you can call it nation 1 or nation 2 or if you wish you can give the name say for example india malaysia india us or any other country that you want uh, considering that the countries that you choose should be Uh, should have the different endowments of the factors of production for example india is abundant in labor uh, us is abundant in uh, capital so choose the country like that two goods suppose x and y we will be using x and y you can give the name of these two commodities you can pick these two commodities okay and two factors of production labor and capital other factors of production like land or the entrepreneur they do not figure in the model then both the nations are endowed with different amounts of two factors that are mentioned factors are labor and capital uh, both the countries that are nation 1 and nation 2 have different endowments in terms of these factors where one nation 1 is uh, with labor i mean the labor is abundant in this factor and the other uh, nation is uh, uh, capital N different uh, amount of two factors uh, nation 1 with labor and nation 2 with capital in abundance 
you sh I should in abundance. Okay? Nation 1 is abundant with labor. Nation 2 is abundant with capital. Okay? You can rephrase the sentence. That is. Then technology is same in both the countries. This is important because in the Ricardian theory, you can find the technology is different in two countries and that would probably define the productivity of labor and that would eventually become the basis for the international trade. But here, the same technology is being used in different countries. So, implication of this uh, assumption is that labor is equally productive in both the nations as well as capital is equally productive in both the nations. Okay, so factors of productions are homogeneous in that sense. Okay, then consumer taste and preferences in both the countries are same. That is, there is same pattern. I mean, the consumers of this country, of the country one or country two, behave in the same fashion. They have the same similar preferences. So that makes it possible to have an indifference curve of the consumer, which is common to both the nations. So you can draw a common indifference curve that will be applicable to both the nations. Then perfect competition in both commodity as well as in factor market. In both the countries, product market as well as factor market is perfectly competitive. That is neither seller nor the buyer in both the markets. That is commodity market or the product market and the factor market. They do not have the market power. So, individual seller or individual buyer cannot influence the demand or the supply, whatever. I mean, all the rules of perfect competition would apply. So, market is perfectly competitive. So, market determines the uh, uh, price. I mean, the labor is determined in the factor market. Sorry, wage is determined in the factor market. And the price of good is determined in the uh, product market. And uh, the rent is de determined in the capital market. Okay. And both the goods uh, demand. Uh, will be determined by the demand and supply uh, of the uh, product. So, that is uh, the implication of the perfectly uh, competitive uh, market uh, for both the goods as well as for both the factors of production in both the countries. Okay. Uh, now, the other uh, assumptions, there are still left some. Now, the remaining uh, assumptions are this. Again, I have uh, written in order to save the time so that I can concentrate on the implications. Perfect mobility of factors of production within the nation but no international movement of these factors. That is within the nation factors of production can be moved from one production facility to other production facilities. Market is perfectly competitive. So, there is no uh, implication for their uh, remuneration like wages or the interest within the ration because market is uh, perfectly competitive. But if international uh, movement of the uh, factor is allowed, then it will disturb uh, the uh, cost position of the two different nations. That is why factor mobility across nations is not uh, allowed in this model. But within the nation, they are perfectly uh, mobile wherever uh, they can be used. Uh, they can be employed, they can go. Okay. Uh, and all the factors are fully employed. Probably I have mentioned it earlier. It can be clubbed with this also or it can be clubbed with one of the earlier assumptions, but I will turn to it later. So, no transport cost and no trade barriers. That is, whatever cost you will take into consideration is its production cost alone. No other cost, no indirect tax, no as if there is no government. Uh, uh, price of the uh, product will be taken purely on the basis of the cost in which obviously some reasonable profit of the producer would be included. Okay, No uh, trade barriers like tariff, quotas and other export duties etc. So, no such cost which is involved otherwise you will have to make allowance for uh, that also to what extent the distance would matter, to what extent the transport cost. So, that would make the model uh, unworkable or unnecessarily complicated. So, all factors are fully employed. Nations are endowed with certain amounts of factors, certain amount of labor, certain amount of capital is endowed to both the countries. One is endowed more in labor, one is endowed more in capital. But both the countries have both the factors of production. And they, all of these factors are fully employed in their respective countries. And then finally, that international trade is in balance. That is, it is the export that finances the import. 
it's not that export exceeds import or import exceeds export because otherwise i mean you would have to uh, allow many things like uh, your past earning of something your uh, exchange reserves you will allow this uh, uh, or the flow of species etc so again uh, we assume that trade is um, fully balanced um, nations export is equal to nations import so obviously the uh, for other nation the same will hold having discussed the assumptions of the model let me present the model or the hacksher olin theory geometrically to show as to what will be the situation when there is no trade between the nations and in what respect the international trade um, will bring about the changes or the benefits okay so we can draw a graph i have mentioned this just in order to have the ready reckoning that there are two countries country 1 and country 2 and country 1 is labor abundant um, and country 2 is capital abundant uh, i mean abundance you can add to this abundant okay there are two goods set x and y where x is labor intensive and y is capital intensive so let me draw a graph we measure commodity x here and commodity y here and we can draw the production possibility frontier of both the nations on the same graph okay suppose this is the commodity uh, country one's production possibility frontier where x1 y1 are the extreme limits that country uh, one can produce o x1 amount of commodity x or o1 y o y1 amount of commodity y or a combination of both similarly because this country is abundant with labor and x is the labor intensive commodity now this country has the production possibility frontier like this where it has x2 and y2 uh, this is production possibility frontier for nation 2 this was for nation 1 right that is it can produce either ox2 amount of x or oy2 amount of y or a combination of both okay now you can recall our assumption that taste and preferences of the countries taste and preferences of the people of both the countries are same so if they are same we can have the common indifference curve to for both the nations so you can have many indifference curve but the indifference curve that will be valid in this respect will be like this okay let us call it indifference curve 1 okay it is tangent to the two production possibility frontiers at two different points suppose this is point a and this is point b okay theory of optimality would require that i mean the optimum result would be obtained when the country is producing that combination that would enable uh, that would make the production possibility frontier to be tangent to the indifference curve so slope of indifference curve and slopes of the two uh, production possibility frontiers here are the same at two levels for nation one it is point a and for nation two it is point b so the price ratio between the two nation should be something like this i mean remember these are not trading as yet this is the price ratio or the internal terms of trade you can call it i mean the rate at which the two commodities would be exchanged domestically and similarly for this price ratio has to be this so it is uh, not a very good diagram from the point of view of the drawing but you can have the price situation like this okay so what does it uh, suggest let me
use a different color for different this suggests that nation one will be producing ox3 amount of commodity x and oy3 amount of commodity y remember uh, assumption of the model is that both countries can produce both the goods both countries have both the factors of production and complete specialization is also ruled out but when there is no trade obviously there is no point of having the specialization that country should produce only one commodity but when the trade will take place even then complete specialization is undesirable okay uh, so this is as far as the country one is concerned commodity oh, sorry country two position will be like this it will produce ox4 amount of uh, commodity x and oy4 amount of commodity y because it is its production possibility frontier is tangent to the indifference curve at this point which is point b so this is the situation when the, these two nations are not trading producing domestically and consuming domestically right let us see as to what will happen when the indifference sorry when the international trade begins i mean i have used the same diagram point a that was here when the country was not traded i have shown it to be here if you can see the dot here in point b it is represented by this dot which is b i hope it is visible okay now this mn is the new terms of trade or you can call it the international terms of trade because now nations are trading so they will have the common terms of trade between them okay and as a result of this consumer is at the higher indifference curve because earlier indifference curve would have been where it would have been touching these two points a and b that you can see here okay so i have not drawn it so as not to make the diagram congested and unreadable okay but indifference curve a domestic indifference curve would have been which would go through the points a and b as are shown here this indifference curve so this indifference curve is ic2 that is passing through this point uh, where the slope of indifference curve which is the higher than the ic1 and the international terms of trade line um, uh, a slope of terms of trade line is the same so the now the situation will be country will be producing this much amount country one will be producing this much amount suppose ox1 but out of this it will be exporting this suppose you can uh, this is suppose uh, c d and e okay the c d e is the tri trade triangle of country one so of the ox amount e d this point is d this point or i should have written it here okay c sorry d e would be exported you can see from this arrow direction of the arrow is of this output that the country chooses ox this is the output of x and output of the y would be this for this country okay out of this ed will be exported to country y similarly country y's output level will be this rather than this point b that was here it will be this suppose you can call it f b point is this this is b point so f g c so out of this output of this is you can call it o y 1 country 2 will be producing o y 1 of the good y out of which it will be exporting to the country x b g amount okay now there are two things that you can observe here it is possible may or may not be it is but it is possible that by entering into trade 
डोमेस्टिक कंजम्पन ऑफ वन गुड माई डिक्लाइन बट स्टिल कंज्यूमर्स विल मूव ऑन टू द हायर इंडिफरेंस कर वेन दे एंटर इन टू ट्रेड एंड यू कैन सी द प्रोडक्शन पॉसिबिलिटी बाउंड्रीज ऑफ बोथ द नेशन आर ब्रिज हेयर आई मीन बोथ कंट्रीज बोथ कंट्रीज दैट आर ट्रेडिंग दे आर एबल टू कंज्यूम मोर देन वॉट दे कुड हैव प्रोड्यूस डोमेस्टिकली एंड फ्रॉम द व्यू पॉइंट ऑफ द कंज्यूमर दे आर बेटर ऑफ एज कंपेयर टू वेन देर वॉज नो ट्रेड ओके सो दिस इज द प्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ दैक्शर ओल इन थेरी दैट आर्ग्यूज दैट कंपेरेटिव कॉस्ट एडवांटेज is determined by the availability of the labor sorry availability of the factors of production whether nation is endowed more with labor or endowed more with capital the country one which is endowed more with the factor of production labor will be exporting to will be exporting uh, this commodity x to the nation two and nation two will be exporting commodity y to nation one because that commodity is capital intensive one more thing you should find that even after trade even after international trade both the countries would continue to produce both the goods their amount would change as can be seen here now country x oh sorry uh, country one is producing less of y and more of x as it was producing prior to the trade okay it is because of the implication of the theory but that as this country is abundant in labor it will be producing more of x from which it will be exporting and it will reduce the production of y so both the nations will continue to produce both so there is no complete specialization complete specialization will would mean that each country is uh, exporting uh, two different commodities the country uh, suppose one is Uh, producing only x and part of it is exporting and it is importing in whatever consumption of y is from country b it is not there that is possible i mean even if country will go for the complete specialization it would still gain as compared to atarki that is when there is no trade but the gain would be less as compared to this situation when the no complete specialization is attempted so this is what is known as uh, all as far as the hacksher polin theory is concerned so thank you very much